firstly, let, let me welcome CJ Ramon to Noise11.com. Uh, you know, the end of CJ Ramon was 2019, and we've got a whole new start uh, with CJ Ramon postcode oh, yeah. with me first and the Gimme Gimmies, which we're really looking forward to. This has been like uh, the best retirement job I could have ever hoped for. <laughs> yeah, I, like you said, I retired in 2019, finished up in Australia, finished up my world tour in Australia. Um, uh, and really was committed to, um, just being at home and, and kind of getting myself healthy again, because I was a mess and the 2019 boy, woo. I, I, I saw pictures the other day of a, a couple of shots of me on stage in Australia. I couldn't believe how heavy I was. I was so big, but I, that was part of the reason why I, I, I announced my retirement too. I, I was just abusing the heck out of myself for so many years being on road. And I don't mean that as like, oh, it's self-destructive or not in any kind of depressing terms. I was just enjoying the hell out of myself for too many years, you know? Yeah. So 2019, I announced that I was going to retire. And then the lockdown happened in March of 2020. So, so we all retired. I, I couldn't have timed it better, right? <laughs> Yeah. So I spent that, I spent that whole lockdown. Um, I, um, I stopped drinking for, for a good year. Um, I lost a bunch of weight. I started going hiking with my family up in the hill. I live in the East Bay of San Francisco now. Um, so I started hiking up in the hills with my family and I got trimmed down and I got healthy. And, and then as things started to thaw out and the gimmies came around and they were like, would you be interested in touring? And I was like, well, you know, I guess, I guess I could, you know, I could do a couple shows. Sure. Why not? You know? And then of course it just turned into like, Hey, European tour, American tour, Christmas tour. We were just about, we're just now we're about to start on a Christmas tour in February. We go to Australia and New Zealand. And so it's kind of just rolled into, um, getting back to doing what I was doing before touring, but that two year break really was a, really was a godsend to me. I, I got healthy and I, you know, feel so much better. I go out on the road and I don't have to drink a, a quart a day to, 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 to have a good time anymore. I have a couple of Guinness while I'm on stage and that's about it. Yeah. But um, yeah, this, this one coming up, um, this trip to Australia, this should be really fun. It's always been one of my favorite places to go. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I've been to a lot of the smaller towns, um, on my own and the gimmies on this trip, we're hitting some, we're hitting some small towns. In fact, I was talking with pinch the drummer, uh, who played with the damned, the English dogs. Um, and he was like, where the hell is Wollongong? I was like, a bit the Wollongong. I was like, oh, I was like, you're going to have a good time. I said, the smaller the town, the more fun. A place like Wollongong is where Lindsay McDougall is uh, from. I mean, yeah. Lindsay, who was at one time in me first of the Gimme Gimmies. You, you're going to come yeah. to Melbourne, which is the home of Chris Cheney, another former member of me first yeah. of the Gimme Gimmies. Will there be a few uh, reunions or special guests popping up along the way? Um, I don't know. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't even know. Uh, I know um, Joey Cape. It's going to be myself, um, Pinch, Joey Cape, Spike, and I think it's Jake Kiley from Strung Out on on uh, on lead guitar. But I'm not really sure. To tell you the truth, <laughs> I try not to get too much information before I go on the road. It it, it just you know. It helps me to keep my head a little bit clearer. But, but me first and the Gimme Gimmies cannot go to Wollongong and not have Lindsay join the band. You oh, cannot no, come to no. Melbourne and not have Chris Cheney join the band. <laughs> we have, uh, we have, ha I've played at least with seven or eight guitar players since I've been in the band. And on tours, th there's been tours when we've had three or four different guitar players switching in and out during the tour so you never know who's going to pop up at a gimme show yeah it must be a lot of fun getting out there and performing these songs i mean songs by uh, you know the beatles uh paula abdul billy joel the wizard of oz nothing makes sense does it nothing knits together it's um uh, for me in particular right so 
yeah, I come from the Ramones, you know, and, and my and my own stuff where it's all downstrokes and it's, you know, it's it's still fun and lively pop, you know, punk music and stuff. Um, but when I got into the gimmies, it's all alternate picking. And so I had to learn a new st- style of picking and all of a sudden i went from like pounding out the root notes to playing all these high-end riffs and stuff i mean the guys that um the guys that recorded the gimme's records the original touring band those guys are some high-end players you know what i mean it's no joke you know they're all some pretty pretty big riff masters so um it you know it, it was a lot of fun learning it but the the live show the thing that i like about it is you'll see like hardcore punks out there singing along to Paula Abdul or the, <laughs> you know, beach boys. <laughs> it, 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 it's really fun to watch. It really is because it's a, um, as opposed to, you know, when you go to a punk rock show and everyone's like, yeah, I'm punk rock. I'm a punk. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you go to a metal show and it's like, you know, metal is like one of the most conservative types of music. If, you, if you're not into heavy metal, you ain't nothing. You know what I mean? And then you see those people at our show and they're dancing in the pit to Cher and Dolly Parton and Elton John, you know, it's, it really is a lot of fun. It's like everybody kind of packs up their bullshit and just comes to have fun. And have you, have you ever really slipped one about. of your own Ramones songs in? No, 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 no. That's 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 not what the gimmies are about. You know, the gimmies are about taking all the guilty pleasure songs and turning them into punk rock songs. You know, Ramones is no guilty pleasure there. That's just <laughs> great punk rock. But um, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that's although it, at the beginning of Sloop John B. Um, uh, you know, they the uh, when they recorded it, they used the Ramones riff in the beginning as an intro to Sloop John B. So there's a little tip of the hat, and that's kind of that's something I I kind of dig too is uh, how how the Gimmies had had done that. They slide in like a little riff from one of their favorite punk songs or one of their favorite punk bands, um, uh, uh, like use it as an intro to a cover. It, it's kind of neat, you know. I I, I kind of dig that. That's that's like one of the cool little creative aspects of the gimmies that probably gets overlooked because it's just it's so much fun, you know. Mm. I'm, a, I'm I'm guessing that probably the first time you came to Australia would that have been the '94 Big Day Out tour? No, my first time in Australia was uh, 1990. Yeah, I think that was our first tour was 1990, and I think that was with the Hard Ons. I think the hard ons were on some of those dates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to be pretty good buddies with those guys. Um, I still am, in fact. Um, yeah, it was 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, that was that was a fun one. So, I think we went to we went to New Zealand too, New Zealand and Australia. So coming back then in '94 and doing Big Day Out must have been, you know, yeah, Big Day Out was fun. Yeah. <laughs> That woo yep. and what a lineup too, boy! That was, was Soundgarden, Bjork, I think might have been on that one. Yeah, the Breeders, uh, the Teenage, Breeders, Teenage Fan Club, Teenage Fan Club. That was like that was a really, really, really great lineup and great tour. I yeah. I really had a lot of fun on that one. I tried like heck to strike up a conversation with Bjork, but I think, uh, you know. I think I think I just come across kind of goonish, and she was probably like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I think I hear my mother calling me." <laughs> but um, yeah, I just you know, I I always thought she was really cool, very unique, does you know, totally out on her own, doing her own thing. I I really liked her a lot, and I in fact I did end up um, I did end up meeting her and and talking with her um, oof, maybe a year later. Uh, Joey and I went to see, um, the sugar cubes in New York city. And we went backstage and met the band. So I I got to meet her on like, you know, not such a, uh, (laughs) I gotta say, I didn't spend too much of that, that tour, um, um, sober, (laughs) The gal, the gals from the Breeders and Chris and Ben from Soundgarden, we must have drank every ounce of whiskey 
and vodka in the entire every city we went through. I mean, we were mm. really hitting it hard on that tour. Really hitting it hard. But um, yeah. Yeah, nothing but good memories. I I, I really I really have always enjoyed touring in Australia. I I I just love it. You know, I I, I like the culture. I I it's a uh, and not to you know, not to sound cliched or anything like that, but definitely got um uh, a a real connection to to U.S. culture. Mm-hmm. You know, not necessarily um purposeful, but just kind of we're both you know kind of both mother england we're the yeah we're the breakaways yeah. <laughs> we're kind of the breakaways there but yeah. um but yeah love it love it always had a good time and and got to play with and meet a bunch of great bands and you know i like you know i used to go down and buy records you know i'd look for you know saints and celibate rifles and like i'd buy up as much stuff as i could beast of bourbon i'd buy up as much vinyl as i could while i was down there and, and carry it back home um yeah yeah great love it I'm really looking forward to this i i really am I, I i thought 2019 when i left i thought that might be the last time i was there you know so this is kind of like yeah <laughs> icing on the cake yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to uh, get you down here um you know just on just on those Ramones days there were three albums weren't there that you were involved with in the late 90s from uh, Mondo Bizarro which was a, a a great record and then uh, we went into Acid Eaters now the Acid Eaters album was a covers record which I guess almost was uh, a bit like the resume for me first and the Gimme Gimme's it showed that you could do a, a cover pretty well yeah well, um, so Acid Eaters initially was supposed to be a um, EP. We were just going to record six songs, and and uh, and that was going to be it. Um, but as we got into the recording, um, our record company really liked it and was like, you know, why don't you just do a full record? You know, why don't you do a an entire album? And um, I think you can tell it was supposed to be it was supposed to be an EP. There's some real kind of filler material on it, but I I mean some of the tracks we really hit out of the park, but some of them were definitely like they could have been left off and it wouldn't have hurt the record. But um, yeah, that was uh that was fun. The you know the '90s is kind of when um like cover songs and and uh cover you know albums of cover songs kind of got popular, you know um we were involved with one it was like the saturday morning cartoon record Mm -hmm. and um johnny uh johnny said to me he was like uh you could pick the song whatever you want to do so i was like we got to do spider-man i was like i could hear the bass line in my head you know i was like we got to do spider-man so we did spider-man for that that was that was fun but that was a whole record of cover songs from uh tv shows from the 60s 70s eras and um and on maybe some eighties era stuff too. Um, and there were a bunch of great bands on that one too, but yeah, covers records. That's I think the nineties kind of was like when, when that kind of was like, people were like, Hmm, that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I always loved, I, I don't want to grow up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That believe it or not. So um, when we were picking songs for, it might have been Mondo Bizarro. When when we were when we were choosing songs for Ma- Mondo Bizarro, and I wanted, I had you know he said said well we're going to do a cover, so everybody submit a cover, so I submitted Tom Waits I don't want to grow up, and it got shot down. So um, when we were doing the last record, when we do an Adios Amigos. Joey said to me, let me submit that song and we'll get it on the record. And I was like, all right. So Joey submitted it and it got on the record. Um, because at that point he submitted it. I seconded it. I think Mark, Mark, you know, said, yay. 
I don't I think I'm not sure that Johnny wasn't uh wasn't a Tom Waits fan or if he just wasn't a fan of the song or or whatever. But I mean I thought it made a great cover. I thought it came out really good. And um yeah. Yeah. We uh, we did a uh, well, uh, we did um, Take It As It Comes was another really good cover that we did. It was, In yeah. fact, I got to play, um, we played that with Robbie Krieger on stage in L.A. Wow. Uh, which was one of the high water marks of my career, playing on stage with the Ramones and Robbie Krieger at once. Robbie Krieger from The Doors. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I've always enjoyed covers, you know. But there's... You know, there's there's covers where people the song is so good and all you can really do is try to be as faithful as you can to it. And then there's what the gimmies do, which is just to rip it apart and make it your own and you know, do a total punk style. Yeah. Have we got any Australian songs uh planned for the gimmies uh tour when you get down here? I think well oh. you, you you have been doing one, haven't you? You've been doing uh Olivia Newton John, have you ever been mellow? Uh yeah. Yep. I but I'm sure there will be uh I'm sure there'll be a couple of surprises in there. Yeah, yeah. Well and uh, almost like a New Zealand song that you've uh, had in your recent set list, uh science fiction, Richard O'Brien. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I think few people realize that the Rocky Horror Show is was written by a New Zealander, Richard O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's wow, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's a good uh, little piece of trivia there. Yeah. So there you go. You've got a couple of uh, Aussie and New Zealand uh, flavors to this uh, set already. Yeah. We look forward to whatever you <laughs> might have in store for us. I uh, look. We've got, we've got a few daggy seventies, eighties, nineties songs in Australia that I'm sure you could jump into and. Oh yeah, do, Kylie do Minogue. We pick up a Kylie Minogue song somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes me first doing kylie minogue is something that i must hear yeah that would be good i think we could probably pull a good one off there yeah yeah well i look forward to seeing uh you back down in australia uh and great right. to catch up with you cj yeah good to talk with you and uh if you come to the show make sure you come back and say hello we'll we'll see you at the northcote theater all right all right <laughs>